Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the December 15th City Council meeting. Uh, please stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Roll call. I'm sorry, roll call. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Sorry, sir. Present. 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 Uh, Bishop Colburn. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for another city council meeting. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you for our mayor, for our aldermen, for all our department heads. We thank you for our city in advance. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, Mayor's comments? Um, I have none. <laughs> Audience time? Jane Ferry, 531 Leith Avenue. I'm Jane Ferry, Executive Director of Waukegan Main Street, and I just want to point out that Art Walk is this Saturday, and it will include a variety of different things as it does every single month. This month, we're happy to say that the Genesee Theater is going to have a showing of Midwest artists as well as um, some entertainment. Also included will be Kevin Busey and friends performing at the uh, Family Piano, which is right down the street from the Genesee. A new business is opening on North Genesee Street. Image Beauty Institute just received its accreditation from the state to be a nail tech school. The owners have also chosen to put their offices in the same building, so we're very excited to welcome them. <clears throat> excuse me. Upcoming at the Genesee Theater are the Bodines performing, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, performing on December 28th. Tickets are still available, but they are selling fast. So if you'd like to see the Bodines with special guest Taylor Hicks, please get your tickets now. The Polar Bear Plunge will take place January 1st, 2015 at our beautiful Municipal Beach at 10 a.m. Sign up early at the Belvedere Rec Center or sign up the day of event. Uh, Waukegan Main Street is proud to be a sponsor once again of this event that benefits the special recreation services of Northern Lake County. For more information, please see waukeganmainstreet.org slash events or call the office at 847-623-6650. And finally, please enjoy your holidays and we'll see you downtown in the new year. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, next, uh, Chris Blanks. 409 Oak Street. Brother Blanks. Uh, today I'm here as an author and as an artist, and I'm promoting the 10th anniversary release of my book, The Scar Spangled Banner. Uh, it's a book of trials, tribulations, and triumph. Uh, it's a book of drugs, guns, racism, police brutality, on the field of spiritual warfare. As it relates to the struggle of a people, community, me personally, as one who is going on 25 years of being cocaine clean and crack free, who triumph over the pitfalls of the system as a single dad who raised his daughters on the south side, who raised his daughters as a single full-time dad on the south side of Waukegan. Um, as one who um, lost, uh, one who lost my dad, uh, who was shot and killed at the age of 13, and I uh, lost my mom to a single gunshot wound at the age of 14. More importantly, it is a self-help book that also offers solutions and not just focus on problems. For your copy of the book, uh, we can be reached at 773-510-1713. Uh, the book itself is $13. Uh, 
as you know, as a 501c3 organization, we don't really receive state or federal funds. So the book itself will go towards aiding and assisting the continuing the initiatives that we put forth in the community uh, as it relates to some of the present day issues. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. And so if you would like to support, as I said, the number is 773-510-1713. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Make sure I got everything on here. That's it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Blank. Time. Why did Mr. Banks would, you rattle that phone number so fast? I got it. I had it. Okay, it's Could 773. You? Yeah. Go ahead. All right, 773-510-1713, and the books are available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item A. A motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Rivera, to approve the regular minutes of December 1st, 2014. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Uh, next is resolution, proclamation, presentation, appointments. State of Significance, Isaac Lyon Residence, located at 946 North Sheridan. Madam Clerk, would you please read the resolution? Is there someone here from that residence? Would you... Whereas the city of Waukegan recognizes that the Isaac R. Lyon residence has significant value part of this historic heritage and cultural of the community. The Isaac R. Lyon residence was a significant and noteworthy structure at the time it was completed, 1873, and it remains as today as a largely intact survival of the period. The house displays the level of craftsmanship and design that marked this rich period of residential design. Whereas, this, whereas the city of Waukegan recognizes the Isaac R. Lyon residence identification with the person who significantly contributed to the development of the city of Waukegan, it was built during a time of tremendous growth in Waukegan's history. Lyon, an early pioneer to Little Fort, established a general merchandise business in 1843. The, the business proved successful and Lyon rose to a prominent structure gaining the nickname of Waukegan's Merchant Prince. Now there be resolved by the City Council of the City of Waukegan, Illinois, that the Isaac R. Lyon residence located at 946 North Sheridan Road be awarded this statement of significance and receive official landmark designation, <coughs> thus recognizing its importance to the city in ensuring its preservation for future generations of Waukegan's residents this 15th day of December 2014. Motion. Motion to approve the resolution by Alderman Tempest, second by Alderman Beedling. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Mayor. Uh, Alderman May. So besides being a beautiful historical structure, if you drive down uh, Sheridan Road, it's always decked out for the holidays. So make sure you take notice when you're way home tonight. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Conkin to move item A under reports and communications up to the next item on the agenda. Item A is presentation of the City, City of Waukegan comprehensive, comprehensive Annual Financial Plan Report for the physical year ending April 30th, 2014, audited by Tilly Baker. Tina, would you step forward, please? Oh, I'm sorry, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Good evening. I'm happy to present to you this evening the results of the city's financial audit for the fiscal year ending April 30th, 2014. 
Um, this is really only an, interview, uh, an overview. There's many important facts and figures that won't be covered in tonight's presentation. The final report was distributed to the council prior to this meeting, and the report is posted in its entirety <laughs> on the city's website. Baker Tilly is the city's independent auditors. Jason Coyle is here tonight. He's the partner that handles our audit, and he's available after this presentation to answer any questions or concerns you might have. He also attended the finance committee meeting earlier to review some of the other reports they issue. I'd like to take a moment to thank the city staff as well as Baker Tilly for all of the hours of hard work spent completing this very technical and complicated report. The auditors work within the governmental auditing standards and provide a reasonable assurance that the city's financial statements are free of material misstatement. The city received a clean opinion letter this year from the auditors. The city's basic financial statements are comprised of citywide financial statements, fund financial statements, notes to the financial statements, and other supplementary information. Due to the constraints of this evening's meeting, I'll focus on the um, citywide financial statements and then the two largest individual funds, which is the city's general fund and then the city water fund. The governmental activities are primarily supported by taxes and intergovernmental revenues, and the activities include general government services, public safety, public works, and economic development. The city's governmental activity statement of net assets presents information on our assets and liabilities with the difference between the two being reported as net assets. This is similar to a balance sheet in the private sector. The city's governmental activity total assets increased by $2.4 million from the prior year and our liabilities increased by $1.4 million. When the city's $157.3 million in liabilities are subtracted from our 181.9 million in assets, the net amount is 24.6 million. And that's what you see broken down in the box to the um, right. <laughs> of that 24.6 million, 38.9 is our capital assets net of debt. So that's things like our streets, our street lights, um, those types of assets, buildings. Um, the city has restricted assets of 13.9 million. So that's money that's set aside for a specific purpose, such as a debt service escrow. And then our unrestricted net assets is a negative 28.2 million. And while the city's unrestricted net assets is a multi-million negative balance, and that's obviously a concern, it has not worsened from the prior year. As to the revenues and expenses for governmental, our revenues increased by 9 million from the prior year to a total of 89.7. Most of this is attributed to an increase in grant revenues that we received for police and fire personnel cost sharing by the federal government, but we also saw an increase in taxes due to an increase in our tax levy, and the state shared revenues were also up as now they're paying on time, which wasn't always the case in the recent past. Expenses also increased 1.8 million from the prior year to a total of 86.6 million. These costs are associated with public safety pension obligations, workers' comp insurance, as well as increased staffing levels in the building and code department. The fiscal year did end with a surplus before transfers in the governmental activities of $3.1 million. As I mentioned, the city's governmental surplus was $3.1 million before transfers, and after transfers, the surplus is 3.8. The city must continue to generate operating surpluses going forward in order to address that multi-million negative net asset that I spoke about earlier. So next to focus on our largest fund within governmental activities, and that's our general fund. We had a really good year. The total general fund revenues finished $5 million over budget projections for a total of $61 million. Telecommunication, hotel, and municipal auto tax performed poorly versus the budget but this was offset by our favorable variances in sales tax, home rule sales tax, food and beverage tax, and our gaming video tax. Our share of state income tax also exceeded the budget as the state was making more timely payments to the city. Licensing did finish under the budget due to continued economic pressure, but fines and fees were held pretty steady compared to the prior year. Charges for services outpaced the budget due to an increase in collections on ambulance fees, um, and also improved fire alarm subscription service. 
General fund expenses came in under budget by $1.1 million for a total of $57 million. The most noticeable reduction was moving the citywide refuse collection contract out of the general fund and into a special revenue fund. That contract was also negotiated to have a lower cost than the prior year. In addition, all categories performed well versus the budget, except for the cost of replacing a few key personnel and central services, and we did have some unplanned payments to consultants and developers to kickstart kick some economic development along the city's lakefront and downtown. Overall, by holding vacancies, continue, or controlling overtime, and limiting contractual and commodity purchases to budgeting thresholds, the general fund's fiscal year excess of revenues over expenditures led to a $4.4 million surplus before transfers. After transfers from other funds, the general fund realized a surplus of 5.1. So what we put together here was a multi-year, 14-year comparison of how our general fund had performed. So our general fund surplus for the fiscal year is bucking a multi-year trend. In fact, since the fiscal year of 2001, the city's past 14 fiscal years, 11 of those 14 ended with a general fund deficit. The 10-year average leading up to this most recent year was an annual deficit of $3.9 million. Because of these multi-year operational deficits, the city was forced to issue working cash bonds in 2009 to fund the current stabilization, a rainy day fund. So the fact that we ended 2014 with an operating surplus is a very positive sign. And in order to rebuild the city's reserves, that surplus has been transferred to the city's rainy day fund for future use. Next, I'll cover the business type activities for the city. That includes the water sewer fund as well as our parking enterprise. Similar to the governmental, this is essentially our balance sheet. The business total assets <coughs> increased by $1.9 million from the prior year and liabilities decreased by $700,000. When you subtract our $16.8 million in liabilities from our $83.7 million in assets, the net amount is $66.9 million. So again, you can see in the box here, the $66.9 million in our net assets, which would also be called like stockholders' equity in the private sector, is comprised of $56.1 million in capital assets. This includes our water plant, water mains, sewer mains. Um, and $10.8 in unrestricted assets. So obviously this is a very healthy operation for us. The business type activities, uh, revenues actually decreased by $1.7 million from the prior year for a total of 13.4. And this relates to a decline in water sales as we have seen foreclosures and vacant houses increase. Expenses were also decreased though by $300,000 to a total of $10 million. Therefore, we did end with a surplus in the water, and su water sewer, and parking combined of $3.4 million for the fiscal year. Okay, next slide, please. So as I stated, the difference between revenues and expenses resulted in this surplus of $3.4 million before transfers and a surplus of $2.8 million after transfers out. We do transfer money every year throughout the year to the general fund to pay for administrative services such as human resources, finance, the mayor's office. So just the water sewer fund, if we look at that as the largest fund, um, the revenues did finish under budget by $1.2 million. Again, that's due to declined water sales. Expenses also finished $6.6 .6 million under budget due to some projects that were funded from a revenue bond issue in 2012, were postponed, but will be completed in the current fiscal year. Therefore, the result surplus will have to be retained in the water fund for those capital projects and are not available for transfer. I'll now review the city's long-term investments and obligations. This uh, chart here demonstrates our capital assets, both governmental and business type combined from 2008 to 2014. It includes our land, building, infrastructure, and we have seen a year-over-year -year decline in the value. Um, from the prior year, we saw a decline of 8.2 million, so our total assets are 161 net of depreciation. And again, really what we're seeing the trend here, why it's going down is because the expense of depreciation is outpacing our reinvestment into these assets. At April 30th, 2014, the city's general obligation debt did decrease by 8.2 million to a total of 71.8 million. 
The city's ratio of general obligation bonded debt to equalized assessed valuation is 6.51%, which is an increase from the prior year of 6.21%. This ratio has worsened not due to an overall increase of debt, but rather because our EAB did decline. Another measure of general obligation debt is on a per capita basis, and for that, our city, our, the city's GO debt as of April 30th was $806 per capita, the lowest per capita amount since 2007. This is our revenue debt, which I hadn't really included in the prior year, but since we have quite a few bonds outstanding, I thought I would. As of April 30th, 2014, the city's revenue debt also decreased as no new bonds were issued during the fiscal year. And currently, we have sufficient coverage to meet all of our debt obligations under these bonds and provide adequate funding for maintenance and operations of the parking enterprise as well as water sewer. Now to our pension obligations. The city's employees participate in defined benefit pension plans. And as of April 30th, 2014, the city made 86%, 87%, and 79% of its annual pension cost contributions respectively to IMRF, police pension, and firefighter pension funds. The combined net pension obligation, the amount of liability which was unfunded as of April 30th, 2014, is a total of $19.4 million for all three funds combined. The city also offers health insurance to our retirees and we're required to annually calculate and report this long-term liability. During 2014, the city expended $1.1 million toward this obligation. However, the total all-in cost of the benefit for the year was $2.1 million. Therefore, only 53% of the expense was fully funded. However, if you notice from the prior year, it is an improvement. <clears throat> and this is due to recent changes in that the city does not make any explicit contributions or subsidies to the retiree health insurance. So we've essentially cut our annually required contribution in half by making that change. The total net obligation on a cumulative basis is $11.8 million on our balance sheet. So that concludes my presentation for this evening. Uh, Jason Coyle is here from Baker Tilly. Um, if he could come up and just reintroduce himself to the city council. And if you have questions for either of us, we'd be happy to entertain those. As Tina said, I'm Jason Coyle with Baker Tilly. I was the partner in engagement. And yeah, I concur with what Tina said, so I won't go over anything in, in more detail, but I am here to answer any questions you might have, or obviously Tina as well. Any questions? Thank you. Tina, what was it what was the total profit to, to the city? What did we actually make last year? We do not call it a profit. Whatever. <laughs> okay. It's a um, so it was for for the general fund, which is the general fund for specifically? Both. Uh, for the general fund we had a surplus of 4.4 million, and for the water fund, our surplus was. Three point four million. Thank yeah. you. And our total debt is going down or up? It has gone down. Both I, I want you to make that point. Revenue, correct. So our the total ratios are kind of dependent on the equalized asset valuation, yeah. so those don't look as great, but the overall debt has declined. Oh, overall debt that the city has has gone down. Correct. That's a plus, Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Well, finally, we get some good news. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, next item is the Finance Committee. Alderman Valco, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The Finance Committee met this evening. Item A, the Finance Committee recommends authorizing the proper city officials to disperse $252,560 in funds to the YCRG Trust for the city's share of the Yeoman Creek Remediation Group 2014 Budget Cash Call Part 2 and the funding coming from 100 dash 712924 
636, and I so move, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Belko. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Beadley. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Item B, the committee recommends approving an ordinance to authorize the appropriation transfer for fiscal year May 1, 2013 to April 30th, 2014 for the City of Waukegan, Lake County, Illinois, for the purposes of balancing the appropriations retroactively to the amounts actually reported in the financial audit for the same fiscal year. Your Honor, this is uh, just housekeeping uh, that we do every, every year, and I so move, sir. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Beatling. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. <clears throat> Item C. The committee recommends approving a permanent withdrawal of one million seven hundred and thirty four thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars from the stabilization fund seven fourteen and transfer to the police and firefighter pension funds as allowed per resolution 12-R-67 stabilization fund policy, parentheses, section Roman numeral 4, dot B, dot III, end of parentheses, and further appropriating said funds by approving an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation for fiscal year May 1, 2014 to April 30th, 2015. Uh, Mayor, this was a, a shortfall on, on the city's part, putting into the pension funds in 08 and 09. It was caught by an audit, uh, so the committee is recommending putting the funds in of a million seven, sir, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Vera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? No. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beatling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. And that can, uh, oh, one other thing, Your Honor, there was nine new business licenses that came in uh, last month to the city of Waukegan, and that's all I have, sir. Thank you, Alderman Valco. Insurance Committee, Alderman Cunningham. Uh, item A, authorize proper city officials to settle public works work and comp workers' compensation claim WC 201-496-9979 for an amount not to exceed $44,049.32, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Cunningham, second by Alderman Beedling. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Item B, authorize proper city officials to set a police department workers' compensation claim, claim number WC 201-285-3865 for an amount not to exceed $62,236.32, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Cunningham, second by Alderman Beedling. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Item C, authorized proper city official to settle police department workers' compensation claim, claim number WC 201. Three nine three eight nine zero eight for an amount not to exceed forty seven thousand four hundred and seventy three dollars and sixty four cents and I so move. Motion by Alderman Cunningham, second by Alderman Beatling. Roll call please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Belko. I recru uh, recuse myself, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Thank you, Alderman Cunningham. Uh, Public Works Committee, Alderman Moisio? Thank you, Your Honor. Item A. Authorize the proper city officials to award 
a seal quote for abatement projects. The invoice for this project is from Tropical Environmental. The addresses were 710 Grand Avenue, $17,250, 531 North Buttrick, $2,250, and 932 North Lewis, $2,250. Funds for this are available using grant proceeds from line item 100-201-824489, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Valco? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Thank you. Item B, authorize the proper city officials to extend the tree contract for this summer with Tree Experts, Inc. of Antioch, Illinois. There are adequate funds in line 312. 1312271169 to do a change order for Tree Experts Inc. for an amount not to exceed $75,000 for additional ash tree removals, and I so move. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Thank you. On item C, Authorize the proper city officials to solicit RFQs for qualified engineering firms for the phase one study to implement this grant. This grant, in short, is for the redesign of Seahorse Drive as well as additional project scope and ISO move. I got a redesign, Seahorse Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Velko? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? No. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? I vote aye, but I don't know how they're going to redesign Seahorse Drive. Uh, Alderman, it's, it's a lot. Of, I, from what Tom has told us, it would be the maybe it curve. would go from the curve. Larson all the way down to the beach house, maybe a little wider, maybe a bicycle. Just, <clears throat> I, you know, it's, a, it's just an RFQ. Wasted your money. Alderman May? Aye. That's it? That's it, Your Honor. Uh, labor you. Relations, that's me. I uh, would like to have a voluntary separation plan for those employees who choose to take an early retirement or take a retirement now. Uh, what we're going to offer them is $15,000, six months of insurance, that has to be taken by, it'll start tomorrow. We'll offer it from tomorrow till the 2nd of January, and they will have to separate from the city by no later than the 30th of January. Your Honor, uh, you may want to explain all the things. Not everybody's getting 15. You may want to explain no. the years of service and um, how that works. It's, it's done by years of service, and what it, uh, what it is is this. Up, up six years, up to six years would be three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Six years to eleven years would be seven thousand five hundred dollars. Eleven years to sixteen years will be eleven thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Sixteen years or more will be fifteen thousand dollars. Your Honor, this is separation from the city, not necessarily retirement. This is it's separating from the city, and they're they're no longer employees of City of Waukee. Right. The last time we offered this, eight employees took it. Uh, we can have anywhere from zero to 18 take it this time. So uh, the motion is made by uh, Alderman Tempest. Yeah, I don't want to make that I'm motion. I'm sorry. Then. I really don't. Motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Rivera. Roll call, please, uh, Madam Can we speak on it? Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, I'm concerned about voluntary retirement at this time of year. With snow possibly coming, with the Public Works Department, with uh, experienced snow plow drivers, and reduction in force there at this time, I, if a lot of them t take it and we're not going to hire, uh, I'm a little concerned. And my thoughts are, you're going to retire, you're going to retire. I don't think, uh, why should I maybe give extra money if somebody's going to possibly retire anyway? So I, I'm going to vote no because of that, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, I, I, if I may, uh, this, is, this is just a concern. Um, if anyone is offered this and they accept it, um, 
are they allowed to come back in another capacity with the city? No. All right. Is there? They're, they're not. That's, is that a policy they are, they are, or is it something you, they you're saying that's going no to be? They are no longer employed, nor will they ever be employed by the city of Waukegan as long as I'm mayor. Okay. Is, is it possible then that we could uh, somehow add that into this verbiage so we, we don't get that? It's in there. It's in there. It is. It's in, uh, Alderman, the it's, same well, language it? exists now that every other person who took voluntary separation adhered to. But if you're concerned, I will make sure Corporation Council yeah. addresses that issue, and we'll make that part of the. Yeah. So it, okay. when you said it's in there, I, I didn't. I, I didn't it's, see it in there. Meaning. It's part of the draft. Okay. It's, it's the on draft. page four already. That they cannot be rehired. That is right. correct, sir. Page At four. another capacity with the city. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Rivera. You know, uh, Alderman Tempest did bring up a good point. You know, when it comes to uh, public works. And uh, I know you were mentioning uh, during the Labor Relations Committee meeting that there's potentially eight uh, people out of public works. Can we delay if there are people that are interested because of the department that they're in and the, uh, the season snow removal operations? Is there any way that we could, the ones that are interested, can we delay their Retirement until uh, spring. Keep separation. Spring. Retirement separation. Un unfortunately, that's not how this program works. There's, I mean, a, there's a window of opportunity yeah. that they have to take. When I was with the uh, the toll authority, I, mean, I, I couldn't retire. We uh, could, you know, during uh, the winter season. I had to wait until you know April because of the fact that they needed you know the personnel. Yeah, you're right about yeah. that. So. Well, I can assure you, if Mr. Haggerty needs, if, if eight people do take advantage of this opportunity, I can assure you that I will hire just to fill those positions because I know that the Public Works Department has suffered immensely over the years. Most of our cuts that came during the uh, layoffs came from Public Works Department, and Mr. Haggerty has done a, 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 a very wonderful job of keeping the city, city operating. And I can assure you that if, if that does come to pass, I will relieve the hiring freeze and hire those people for public works. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I, you know, and, and you're right, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I want to echo Alderman Rivera's concern. Hiring them back is one, but that public works department during the winter time with the experienced drivers that we need, I know. That's a, it has to be a concern of yours, that we get those right individuals at that time. Uh, eight bodies being lost in a key department, the way our services, uh, the way we perform the services out there, what we'll, we'll we heard. So I, uh, I would ask that we just caution out how, we, how those guys are, are exercise that voluntary uh, separation. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the only thing I'm, I, I do agree with Alderman and, uh, and Rivera. You know that's, Alderman, that, that's detrimental. Alderman Cunningham, I too, I too agree with that. Yes, okay. So what we can do, once we determine who is going to take the voluntary separation, uh -huh. if they do or do not, because at this point we don't know right. if anyone's going to take but it. But I agree, I, I but understand. If, if we determine that that will negatively impact public works, we may be able to sit down and adjust that, term, that date of okay. termination. Sounds yes. great. I was going to say that the, the, the date, the date of termination would be June, January 30th. That's arbitrary, isn't it? I mean, we can yes. change the date. Absolutely. Why yeah. don't we change? I think it would change the date till after the snow season. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Change it till after the snow season. Somehow. Well, I would I would ask you, the alderman, to please understand, until we find out if Who's any gonna are going to leave. Fire, yeah. yeah. If that, if that is the case, I'm sure that we can make the necessary adjustments in the termination date to accommodate that need. Is not Corporation Council, can we do that, you think? We, we can, we'd have to do it on an individual basis with each individual person before yeah. they execute it. We can't right. offer it as a blanket document. Right. Otherwise, they can accept that document. So... Um, so I'm saying... We can't, yeah, I guess you can't, can't say, okay, you guys can go out on the 30th. Oh, 20 of you are going out, come back to the council, and we're going to change the date on you. I mean, 
No. I'm, I'm, all the temps is concerned is valid, and, and I'm, again, you know, June 30th, next thing you know, you know, winter's around here, next thing you know, in March, we got eight new guys on the street, right. clowns, you know. I'm just concerned about that, that's all. Yeah, I'm, and, and I understand and I don't that. know, I mean, like you said, I don't know who's going to take it. Nobody could take it. But if we get eight guys at Public Works or six guys that take it, you know, I mean, I got all the faith in the world in Tom and Pat, but, I mean, that's a lot. You're, you're taking out guys that, I mean, our guys know how to plow snow, man. They know what they're doing. Experience. And believe me, I will take that into consideration. Uh -huh. Uh, is, Alderman Tempest. Is there any need that it has to be now? Could not that date, the separation date, be pushed toward the summertime? Uh, people are thinking uh, of vacation. Tamika, can you come forward, please? I know the dates now. We, we can getting, change. We can change it. it we can it, modify the date. Yes. I think. Uh, Tamika, would you would you please address his concern? Um, well, the date can be um, can be adjusted, but the whole purpose of having the voluntary separation plan now, as opposed to later, is to help with the budgetary con um, concerns for the budgetary concerns right now. So we're trying to have the VSP done before um, the um, before February. If you get it done now, it would reflect this it, year's. It would help the budget. Correct. correct. Yes, that's what you're talking. It's all correct. budgetary. I see where you're coming from. I was just thinking of the workforce and uh, yeah. public works is rather short now on hands, believe me. Yeah. I know that. They've been cut to the bone. And uh, I just they hate to lose some experienced plow drivers at this time of the season. I would be willing to put it off to April, you know, and yeah. the following year, you know, and Phil, but that's my concern. So you guys have thought about it. Have to live with it, I guess, but that's why I said no one would get it. Yeah, Alderman, and we, when we sat down and worked through this, um, it was a budget constraint that I was working within, and I was trying to generate as much savings to the city as I possibly could, and that's why the parameters of the dates were set as they were. But now that you brought this to my attention, I too am a bit concerned that too many, may, too many people may take this. So I, I think what we can do, and I, I just had a conversation with the Corporation Council, we can gear each one of these dates to a specific employee. Right. And the ones that are uh, employees of Tom Hagri may choose to leave later. Okay. It'll be at their discretion, but I, we can do that. Okay. 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 That's fine. Any other questions? Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Belko? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisey? Aye. Alderman Beadley? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Thank you, Tamika. A new business, item A, approval of payroll dated December 12, 2014. Regular payroll, $1,394,570.82 and bonus payroll, $100,891.44. Motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Balco? Aye. Alderman Rivera? A vote aye. Uh, can you explain the, the bonus payroll? Holiday buyout. Okay, Do thank you. you. I, I, I think we should, that's a good point, Your Honor. I think we should reclassify that. Because yeah. I had two phone calls this week. <laughs> yeah. What are the bonuses? You know, yeah, exactly. they're not bonuses. It's buyout. All right. That's Thank you for clarifying that. Did you ask for Roll call. Um, Rivera? I voted aye. Cunning Alderman Cunningham? Aye on the bonus. <laughs> Alderman <laughs> Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Item B, approve of bills dated December 15, 2014, in the amount of $1 $193,123.01. Motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Balco? Aye. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Cunningham? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Moisio? Aye. Alderman Beedling? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman May? Aye. Item C, approval of raffle sales by Nicole Lemberger of North School. Motion by Alderman Tempest, second by Alderman May. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 
Item D, approval of raffle sale for Mixed Nuts Bowling League. Uh, motion by Alderman Moisio, second by Alderman Rivera. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion passes. Ordinance and resolutions. Item A, extension of a maximum 12-month period between primary plat approval and final plat approval of the River Glen subdivision at southeast corner of Belvedere and River Road. Uh, what, what, we're, what they're asking for is an extension up to one year. Um, and I would support this position because during that period of time, they are going to do the, the, comprehensive, the comprehensive study of that corridor. They have a check uh, that they're going to present to us after this vote for the payment of that, of that Correct. study in the amount of $32,000. Any questions on this? You know what? Uh, I'm going to get the check right away. Mayor, <laughs> Mayor. Yes. You know we do, we do have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Glenn and uh, Chris here. If they do you like to give speak us on this quick, or not? Quick no. update no. On, on what's going on, Glenn. If you can. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice. That'd be nice. So this way the alderman will okay. know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Glenn Christensen, senior planner with Manhart Consulting. We are the consultants for the River Glen Capital Group. Uh, we're asking for an extension of just the filing of the final plat. Uh, we have spent a considerable amount of time since this was approved by the city council last December. Uh, our first goal was to get all the offsite utilities uh, started first before going on to doing the onsite work. Uh, that work has uh, coming close to uh, being completed now with all the, all the uh, number of permits that we have to get. We anticipate signing a contract soon with Berger Excavating. They could start work within 30 days. Uh, some of the off-site work is through some uh, pretty mushy ground around the Des Plaines River and they'll take advantage of the hopefully some frozen ground to help them with their construction. But we're extending the uh, sanitary sewer west to the to the Lake County Interceptor and uh, extending a 12 inch water main from River Road to O Plain Road under the tollway uh, for, for the water main. So that work should start uh, within 30 days. Thank you, Glenn. Thank, Thank you. you. Glenn. Okay. Start within 30 days. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, you're on a question well, I, for you. Alderman Cunningham. We have, the, we, have a, the, we have a moratorium out there right now already, right? For building. Right. For building? For building, uh, does, is all this going to be the same thing? The this moratorium is, extent is all that is all that no, the same this as is, one? No, this is part of this is part of the original. There is a moratorium on any building after this corporation. So oh, okay. that's that. This is already a planned development. We held, the, and we wanted to do that because before we do this comprehensive study for future development on that lake right. uh, along right. that corridor, well, I understand that we I, have to have that, and this will allow them time to get that report done right before they start okay yeah I, I didn't know if this is all part of the extension more term is that the same no. thing or just no, yeah. two separate items right okay just yes. want to make sure okay alderman balco aye alderman rivera aye alderman cunningham aye alderman conkin aye alderman moise aye alderman beedling aye alderman newsom aye alderman tempest aye alderman may Item B, Hold making on, a scrivener's no. correction to mm -hmm. Chapter 3, Section 3-4 of the Municipal Code entitled Alcoholic Beverages. Uh, Corporation Council, would you explain that, please? When this ordinance was drafted, uh, you have to change two different paragraphs. They, they changed one of the paragraphs at the top, but it also needs to be reflected in the following paragraph at the end to indicate the total number of license in each classification. It was just an error in putting the number in to correct the additional license uh, when we did uh, one of the licenses, I believe it was for the brewery, microbrewery. Yeah, that was on Oak Brewery. And, and, so, and so therefore, it's just, a, just to make the ordinance correct. It has no significance other than that. Thank you. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Cunningham. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Moisio. Aye. Alderman Beadley. Aye. Alderman Newsom. No. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. You may not have heard me, but that motion was made by Alderman Conkin and seconded by Alderman May. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, there, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot to mention that. Yes, it was. Um, after after Alderman's time, we will be going into uh, oh, no. 
executive session to discuss litigation and purchase of real estate. So for all intents and purposes, once this is done with the Alderman's time, uh, we're going to go back and then when we come out, we'll, we'll uh, adjourn the meeting. Alderman's time, Madam Clerk. Alderman Balco. Thank you, Madam Clerk. When I arrived here this evening, I was in a neutral mood until I came off the elevator and I walked over here and I met with the two young ladies from records who were just finishing up putting up all these Christmas decorations and stuff. <laughs> and I just want to say a thank you yeah. to uh, Deborah and Carol from records who came up here and did all this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm very impressed that I put up a little festive holiday season here. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Alderman Rivera, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, uh, uh, I want to uh, thank uh, this committee for the extension of the uh, moratorium out there in uh, River Road. Now I'd like to see Mr. Kennedy uh, come up here and Chris Shaw and present the uh, the check to uh, to the mayor if you want to come on up. Made out I'd to appreciate that. Okay, it's W A Y N. <laughs> And uh, also, uh, I want to echo Alderman Valco's uh, compliment of the uh, beautiful job they did up here with the, uh, the decorations. It's, it's awesome. And I just want to wish every, uh, this is going to be our last meeting uh, uh, before the new year. And I want to uh, wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, make sure that everyone's safe out there. Thank you. Alderman Cunningham. Uh, the first thing I want to talk uh, is to say I want to congratulate Pastor uh, Jan Cummings of Trinity AME Church uh, that is located in the First Ward. Uh, her and the parishioners uh, did a, a, I like to call it a unity march, uh, to bring the awareness of of different things that are happening throughout our country. Sometimes it is difficult to talk about subjects such as this, but I think in good leaders or great leaders say and do things that other people don't want to do. And this is just one of those, uh, those conversations. Again, if I spoke about it last, at last council meeting, I'm speaking about it now. We need to have these conversations. Uh, as a first vice president of uh, Lake County NAACP, uh, I'm going to be putting together a, I don't want to call it a forum, I want to call it a straight talk, where we can talk about issues uh, such as how do we interact when we are stopped by police. I think a lot of our young men, our young ladies, might have uh, a different way of thinking than some of us do up here. But what we can't do is assume. I'm going to be asking frontline officers, Chief, not you. You said it best yourself. You're not the one that comes there at 2 o'clock in the morning. We need the frontline officers for them to, to be there. Mr. Blanks, yourself. Mr. Mike Nierheim, defense attorneys. I think it's so important that young men and young ladies, particularly young African American men and Latino men, understand and know how you should react when approached by an officer. Whether you like it or don't like it, you need to know. Uh, I was talking to a young lady, and one of the things she asked me, why do I have to give my driver's license to the police? Why can I ask for an, a supervisor? I'm not the one to ask those questions because I don't know, but I do believe that there's a, a misunderstanding or, or whatever word you might want to use. 
there needs to be open and honest dialogue with our young men, our young ladies, and heck, sometimes me. Um, so please be looking forward for us to be putting that together. Uh, and as I said last, last, uh, last council meeting, I, I, I don't see us up here having a problem with that. But I, what I do see is some of us not wanting to talk about it, maybe be afraid. I don't know what the issue may be, but it has to come out. It needs to be talked about. That's my personal opinion. And I, too, want to echo Alderman Valco and Alderman Rivera, those young ladies who came up and did these decorations. And prior to that, in Rutgers, I don't know about other, other departments, but in Rutgers, when you, in every season there is, you can go to Rutgers and it is just beautifully decorated. I think they do a fantastic job. I'm glad they've extended that to our entire city. And last but not least, I want to wish not only my family, but all of the aldermen, mayor, corporation council, department heads, city of Waukegan, your families, a Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. God bless. Alder McConkin. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to reflect also that another year has come and gone. And the city has had some struggles over the year, and we've had struggles with budgets, and we'd have struggles up here at the council. But I want to commend and let everybody in the city of Waukegan know that you've got some outstanding employees here. And whether they work here at City Hall or down at the water plant, out at Public Works, whether they're policemen or firemen, they're outstanding employees, and they're led by a senior staff that is an outstanding group of people that has worked hard and led by the mayor to help the city get through this year. So as we finish the year, I just want to uh, echo Alderman Cunningham. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I hope everybody does real well and looks forward to the next year. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Moisio. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I passed out a sheet to the aldermen, so they're going to know what I'm ta talking about. I had a chance to meet with uh, some people from the Affordable Housing Corporation of Lake County. Um, and I think everybody knows in Joaquin, we need to try to promote as much home ownership as we can, a lot of times people will get on you know, you know, just had another apartment building or this or that, and, 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 and justifiably so maybe. But there's a program, uh, it's a Affordable Housing Corporation of Lake County, and I met with them. Uh, they're well established and they're a respected nonprofit organization that works in the county, local municipalities, uh, and the course to improve the housing stock, increase home ownership opportunities, and prevent foreclosures. Um, and they, they reached out to us because we have a lot of foreclosures. We have a lot of vacant homes. Uh, they've approved 200, 200 owner-occupied homes in Lake County and rehabbed and resold nearly 50 foreclosed and vacant properties, all with no direct involvement from the municipalities. Um, in recent years, they've targeted their work in neighborhoods on the brink of decline due to heavy foreclosures. Their intervention helped stabilize those areas and increased home ownership. The benefit was so visible that the village of Mundelein and Round Lake Beach decided to create a partnership with them in order to bring more resources to the villages and encourage friends to be spent in neighborhoods that they, the village, deemed a priority. I think all of us understand. I mean, we've taken down 25 homes that were beyond repair. We still have a number that if we can get the right home ownership in it, it helps. No one wants to be next to a vacant home. It's not good for the property values. It's not good for the neighborhood. It's something that everybody has to keep an eye on. So this, this program may be able to help us with that. Uh, both Mundelein and Round Lake Beach provide them with zero interest line of credit to re acquire, rehab, and resell distressed homes. Once the property is resold, they use the funds to improve another property in the village. Uh, they're not a flipper. They're not looking to make uh, huge profits. They're a nonprofit. Their goal is to ready the home for the next generation. They fix everything from the ground up, ensuring that the next owner won't, won't need any major investments for five to ten years. It's run by a guy named Mike Mater, who is one of the best known respected construction managers in Lake County. How we would work it with us, that's open for discussion uh, between them and, and the city. Um, but I wanted to get this out there because I think it's a, it's a good way for us in the city to try to get home ownership, to get people to own their home, a give them a chance. Alderman May has worked with them a little bit before uh, when she was in her past life. Uh, I'm sure all the McCunningham's mom knows about them. They're pretty well known in the county of Lake. I would like them to come 
to the next meeting if we could mayor and get them on the agenda so they could give us a five or ten minute presentation on what they can do again this is another way for us to improve the city from the neighborhood out by giving people a chance to get into a home and to own the home habitat for humanity does it to some extent but this is another way we can't tackle our housing problem with just one size fits all we have to have a lot of different strategies on it some need to be taken down we need this we need habitat for humanity all of those things so I'd like to get this on the agenda for the next council meeting if this council would mind a five to ten minute presentation from these people and see if we can't get this partnership rolling thank you Alderman Beadley I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year thank you Alderman Newsom. I'm echoing everyone else. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, like Alderman um, Conkin stated, we've had a, a good year. It's good to come to the end and have a surplus in the general fund. So looking forward to a new year. Have, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, safe holiday. Thank you. Alderman Tempest. As I drive around Waukegan in the evening, I, I can see the spirit of Christmas becoming contagious. I look at the home decorations, and some of them are really unique. I look at our two gentlemen here. If you want to really see a unique one, go to Ridgeland and Sheridan Road on the southeast corner. What a display. What a great job you guys have done there. And I re it really adds to the community when we see people take pride in their home and their, by lighting it up with, with Christmas lights. And I think the citizens of Waukegan are doing a great job. Uh, with, and then I'd like to oh, add sorry. that um, I'm still talking. Huh? I've got a little bit to say. And I, I, you don't say much, I know. But <laughs> now you lost my thought. I've got to write thing. Oh, family. So Christmas is a family time. And, you know, sometimes as things get tough, the economy gets a little, a little tougher. Family needs to come together. We need to work together as a family. We need to work as a family with citizens of Waukegan, with your neighbor, their family, their family. And you know, get to know your neighbor a little better. In my block, we all know each other. We really do. But it really helps, it makes your neighborhood a lot stronger, a lot more, just a better neighborhood when you look out for each other. So with that, I would like to wish everybody a, a very Merry Christmas. When I say Christmas, not holidays, and I'll say New Year after that, because I do use the word Christ, I'm sorry, but I think that's why we have Christmas and we should not forget that. With that, uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Slav, our treasurer, for my nice tie. That's really a power tie, that red. Uh, uh, you picked a great one for me. I, I'm going to wear it, too. I guarantee you, I won't give it away as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Look, looks better on Alderman May than it does on you. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. You got a man's job there as Alderman. Oh. <laughs> I got Excuse you. me? I still love you. Alderman May. Merry Christmas, Alderman May. <laughs> Alderman May. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited that I'm not going to have to talk about leaves for the next 10 months. <laughs> but leaves is over, everybody. No yard ways. Not to the in the yards, not on the curb. And with that, I'd just like to wish everyone a very safe and happy holiday. Um, please celebrate responsibly, and we'll see you next year. And thank you. I would like to make a comment. You know, as a mayor, my obligation and responsibility is to make this city work. And I have to say, in all honesty, I couldn't ask for a better group of people to help me through very difficult times and make me look good. And I want to acknowledge the people who make me look good. And those people are Tom Haggerty, Public Works, a man among men, Russ Tomlin. As you know, we have about 100 and almost $200,000 worth of development. Russ Tomlin was instrumental in getting that done. George Torres, I took George on board because I knew he was a competent, caring and courageous man to take on a job in the collector's office, which was difficult at best, and he's done an outstanding job. Ezell Robbins, CDBG, a man who makes things, makes magic work on, this, on 
in our housing stock. Ezell has taken upon himself to make Waukegan a better place to live, work, and play, and he deserves all types of accolades. My son David, he's my son, nothing else needs to be said about David. Wayne Wallace, probably one of the nicest men you're ever going to meet, Compassion man, compassionate man, dedicated to the police department. He worked for me when he was young. I knew that one day he would be a star, and he is a star, and he's a wonderful person to do the job he does. Rico Farrell, my next door neighbor. When Rico was, when I was considering Rico, um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with Rico. I, Rico came to my house. We had about a, an hour and a half talk, and I was convinced when he left my house that there was no one better than Rico Farrell to do the job to get the fire department back in, in order, and he has done it well. Thank you, Rico, very much. Tamika Jones. Tamika has worked diligently in the HR department. She has given of herself without any, any fear. She's courageous. She's very cautious, I should say, of some of the things she does and says because she's in a very vital position. Noel Kisher Lepper, who's obviously been a, a, just a wonderful person, done a great job for the city. Um, Tina, Smel Tina Smigelski and I have had many, many, many conversations about the budget. Tina is the reason we came, came in this year with a substantial gain. I know that all the departments had a lot of difficulty with me because I am, I'm really cheap. But I'm cheap because the city deserves someone like me. And we're going to make money. We're going to stay in the black, hopefully as long as I'm here. Um, my, my work wife, Marie LaCour, who has made me look good for many, many, many years, and she will for many, many more years to come. Treasurer John Schwab, who took the bull by the horns and did his job diligently and made Waukegan a better place for all of us. Our money is safe with John Schwab, I can tell you that. Um, Dave Marion. Dave Marion comes to my office every morning. Every morning he gives me a report. And one of the best decisions I made was to give Dave Marion the opportunity to do the job that no one else had the courage to take on and do it right and do it because he always does the right thing. Ann Lynn, great attorney, great person, wonderful. She's helped me so many nights, so many days. Um, when I go, when I have bouts of insanity, she brings me back to reality, and I really appreciate that. And you, you're well worth the money we pay you, and I, if I could, I'd pay you a lot more, but it doesn't work that way. And uh, Bishop Colburn, as you see him up here, Bishop Colburn is, is our spiritual leader. When times get tough and some of us are relinqu relinquished to the corner, it's him who brings us out and brings us back to where we should be. And for that, Reverend, I thank you. And one of the guys that has done immense things for the city, he's a brilliant man, a good friend, and a former policeman, my, my friend, Corporation Council, Steve Martin. Steve Martin analyzes every bill that comes before us. He approves or disproves the, the bills for litigation, for attorney's fees. Steve Martin and I drafted a, an agreement that none of our attorneys, none of our attorneys, no matter what you do for the city of Waukegan, makes more than $185 an hour. We were paying up to $350, $400 an hour. Steve Martin put the kibosh on that, and because of Steve, he has to take some of the credit for our, how would you say it, it's a, a, our gain, right? Is that what you say, surplus. Tina? A surplus. surplus. He is a part of that because I can, I can tell you this, we're in a difficult time right now with litigation, but Steve is monitoring it and taking care of it. And basically, I already said Russ Tomlin. But he, Russ, you did a good job anyway. But anyway... If I would have a Christmas wish, it's that all these people that I just mentioned stay with me till, till I'm no longer mayor of the city because they are the heroes, not me. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to add the uh, city clerk.
as well as the alderman up here too. They've done well, a I, great job. Too. I told the class today, and the alderman, of, of course, uh, one thing I, you know, as long as I'm on a roll, <laughs> we used to have bitter battles up here. I remember when I was city clerk, the battles we had up here. And one of the main instigators was my good friend, Larry Tempest. But guess what? We're all on the same page. We all work toward one goal. And that one goal is the betterment of the city of Waukegan. And thank all of you very much. Merry Christmas. And the motion to go into executive session to discuss litigation and purchases of real estate by Alderman Tempest. Second by Alderman May. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Okay, uh, we're back in executive so session. Roll call. Quick. Alderman Valco. Present. Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Cunningham. Present. Alderman Conkin. Present. Alderman Moisio. Present. Alderman Beedling. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Tempest. Present. Alderman May. Present. Motion adjourned by Alderman Conkin, second by Alderman Rivera. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.